Hi, everybody. Welcome to one of my favorite places on Earth. This is my garden in Santa Barbara, California. I love, love, love being here. I have about 500 rose bushes in this garden, each rose with a different name, a different personality, a different fragrance. Uh, this is one of my uh, all-time favorites. It's an antique climbing tea rose, has about 120 petals on it. And when the petals uh, fall, the whole ground looks like snow. I was told that if you want a great garden, you got to get the great guy. The great guy for roses is Dan Buffano. He knows everything about roses. He taught me everything I know about gardens, which still isn't a lot. But we're, I do know we're standing between hot cocoa and Marilyn Monroe. And before I met Dan, I didn't know that every rose had a name. Oh, yes. Yeah. But anyway, Dan is the one who helped put this entire garden together. We, I sat down with Dan, and we planned it based upon the colors in my house, right? Exactly. Yeah. These roses were all chosen to match your interiors. Let me show y'all. This is my... Favorite, favorite, favorite rose. Look at this rose. This is called Honey Dijon. I knew nothing about roses or planting roses. I think the biggest thing is knowing the climate and the soil, right? That's what sure. I've learned from you. The right rose for the right location. Okay. It's all about good drainage, yeah. good soil, yeah. good air circulation to keep your diseases down, and lots of sunshine. So the same rose that's going to do well in Iowa isn't necessarily going to do well in yes. California. Right. That's Santa right. Barbara is the perfect place to grow roses. Yay! You are. <laughs> they, we we have... got the perfect place! <laughs> I knew something was going on here. That's this why I'm is so a lucky. rose town, honey. How do I know if I live in Idaho mm -hmm. what rose I should get versus if I live in Memphis? How do I know that? I think the best way to do that is to contact your local rose society. And There's a rose society? Almost every big or even small cities have rose societies. And they'll teach you how to choose the right roses for your area. So the key is getting the rose that's best for your environment. Which is what we did. Yes. We did that yes. a lot. And I think it paid off. Boy, did it ever pay off. Would you look <laughs> at this garden? <laughs> if you want to grow your own rose garden, you need to contact your local rose society or library and find out what kinds of roses will do well in your area because they all don't do well in the same areas. You can start with just one bush. It really is, I believe, the gift that keeps giving. Because be besides roses, for years I have always loved the beauty of English gardens. With the help of Dan, my rose guy, here's what we were able to create in my backyard. Coming up here, I'm gonna show you my English garden. I went to Dan and said, could you help me put together an English garden? And as you would expect, Dan said, what kind of flowers do you want? I go, I don't know, English ones. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what makes an English garden an English garden? I think it's a mix of a variety of plants Yeah. that transition. Generally, you can see that they follow a wall, and the size of the plants transition upward. Ah. So you have layering, and that's, that's what an English That's what I love about, about it. It's about layering. Mm -hmm. That's what makes me so happy. And layering is also about texturing, right? Absolutely. Because you look in this lots of different textures. See, this whole garden was designed so that I could come down, or somebody could, <laughs> come down and cut the roses and the flowers, mix the flowers, and all of these flowers can go into the house. Mm. This is a pergola outside my tea house here. This is one of my other favorite roses. It's in the same family as the Honey Dijon. This is called Butterscotch. I just planted this like a couple months ago. And in probably six months to a year, this is gonna cover this entire pergola and it will be covered in roses. Won't that be a dream? And over here, let me show you. Dan, come here, let's show the people my rose. Dan and I have been testing along with other neighbors who are also testing some of these plants, uh, rose to see if I could have an Oprah rose. A couple of seasons ago, we tested some. They were a little too light, a little too airy. So mm -hmm. I'm, going, I'm going for a vibrant red. This is going to be like a ruby red when it's in fully in blossom. This is an eight inch bloom. Eight inches Remember, wide? Eight inches wide. I need a big rose with some color in it. We couldn't have a pale rose. I'm excited to give you an update about our own YouTube channel. Now you can find new videos every day. They're the kind of videos that will make you look at life differently. They may even make you laugh a little bit. Subscribe to the OWN channel today, and we'll see you on YouTube.